Looking for magic cards? Channel Fireball offers a wide selection of magic singles and sealed product. You can now use the promo code LVD at checkout. Well, we've had some pretty good experiences with Relic Robber so far. Definitely a powerful card if you can get it out early. But this pack is quite powerful. We've got arguably the best or second best common in the set with Into the Royal. We've got some very powerful uncommons with the Root Grazer and the Familiar in their respective archetypes. So yeah, this pack is pretty stacked. I do like Root Grazer and Familiar a lot and they could potentially be better than Relic Robber in their respective deck, but they do commit us to a two-color pair right away, making them a lot less flexible than a Relic Robber or Into the Royal. So I think I'm still just going for the Relic Robber here, and we'll see where we end up. Ooh. Hello there, Carrix. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, Carrix is pretty decent too. We're not committed to a second color yet. What else is in the pack here? Consumption's decent, Deadly Alliance, Rabbit Bites. There's no amazing red card here. Electromancer, Cinderclasm are not high priority picks. So yeah, I'll, I'll take a Carrick, why not? And next up, best card in the pack, probably the Takedown, followed by Maybe Baloth. I'm not really tempted by any of the blue cards in this pack. We do have a Relic Robber first pick, but Molden Blast is pretty weak, so I think I'm probably still just taking the Kabira takedown, and we'll let the next couple packs guide us to see where we end up. But yeah, there's like no blue or red cards that I would really want to take here. So between Baloth and takedown, I think I just go for the takedown. And then pack number four. Well, my favorite card here is the Acquisitions Expert, so we can take a fourth color here and kind of see where we end up. I guess you could make the case that we want to take Electromancer to go with a robber to kind of have some different creature types for party. The only green card's not super exciting, but definitely playable. Don't have any warriors for the Relic Axe yet. There's no ma amazing blue or white cards. So I, I think I'll just take the Expert here and just stay open. And we'll slowly need to make a decision here. Well, that's a pretty late Vanquish the Week and a pretty late Malachi Rebirth. So it does feel like black is open if we got a fourth pick Expert and now we've got uh, Vanquish and Rebirth. Between the two I think it's close, but I'll probably still take the removal spell here. Um, especially since we're not sure which colors we are yet. I don't want to end up with a deck that has to play 17 lands plus all these dual face cards. So I just want to make sure that our spells are actually good. There's also the Jerboa, which is decent. The Nightrunner's okay, but it's kind of difficult to get it in for damage, and it doesn't win the game if you hit the opponent once, unlike the Relic Robber. So, yeah, I'll just stay open here. I am a big fan of the Ambusher as a 2-drop. Pretty late Celebrant and Raptor. So no one's maybe in the Cleric Life Gain deck, and then the Raptor is an excellent one, especially in Landfall or Dual Faced cards decks. Could take one of the white cards, could just take another Rebirth, and stick to black, which is the only color that's really open from our perspective. Or I can take the Ambusher as a nice 2-drop and maybe pivot into red-black. I think I might just take the Rebirth now. Just because we know for a fact that black is open, but white and red might just be a coincidence here. Well, black keeps flowing. I've got a Ravager's Mace, Minotaur, and Vanquish the Week. So had we taken the red 2-drop, we would have had a, a lot of options here. Given that we took the Rebirth, I mean, we could still take the Minotaur. It is nice in a red-black party deck. Uh, we've got Rogue, Rogue, this would be a warrior. Can usually pick up some warriors in red. And it is definitely a signal, especially alongside Ravager's Mace in the same pack. So I think it's close between Vanquish and Minotaur. I think both are better than the Mace. And I'll, I'll take a bit of a gamble here with the Minotaur, even though it's not uh, a card in one of our main colors. 
And then here we've got Stampede and Electromancer. Had we taken Vanquish in the previous pack, I would take Stampede here, given that we took Minotaur. I think it's an easy Electromancer. And then I'm a big fan of the Hellion, even though it's not a party creature type, just because it synergizes so well with the dual-faced cards like Rebirth. Could also make a case for Colossus if we're gonna kind of lean into the party synergies, but it, we'll probably get a Colossus later. I'll just take the Hellion. And then another Hellion and Electromancer, so red also seems quite open here. So I think red-black is a place to be. And then between the two, I'll probably just take the Electromancer since it's easier to pick up more expensive cards later. And yeah, Electromancer also can be nice in multiples if you get to empty your hand. Cinderclasm is okay, but it's a bit of a nombo with having all these low toughness creatures in our deck. It's also a bit of a nombo with Relic Robber since it just kills all the tokens we make. I'll take a Stinger. We've got a few rogues to synergize with it. Not really planning to mill the opponent, but it's just a one for death touch. And again, we'll probably get a Colossus later if we really want it. Sneaking Guide's a nice combo with the Relic Robber as well. And between these two, they're both pretty medium in our deck. I'll take the Blade. Oh wow, last pick Ambusher, that's a gift. So I think we made the most out of this first pack. And uh, we open a pretty nice one here with Thundering Rebuke. Excellent two mana removal spell, and if no one else is red black, which most likely no one else is, unless someone took the previous mace pretty late and pivoted into red black, we should be able to wield this one. And at the very least, if we don't wield mace, maybe we'll wield like a gloom hunter, maybe we'll play kite sail. So, easy rebuke. And we're starting to solidify ourselves into red black. Don't hate a feed swarm. Not at its best in red-black, a bit better in black-white where you've got a bit of life gain, but still okay to have one copy. Can maybe hope to wield the three mana warrior in that pack. So looking at our curve, we've got a couple two mana creatures, a bit of removal, a couple party types. You can look at the creature types here, we've got two warriors, two wizards, four rogues, no clerics, can maybe pick up some clerics in black, like the two mana vampire. All right, well, I've got a lot of options. I don't think Shadow's Verdict is going to be great in my deck. But we do still have another Minotaur. We've got a couple more rogues here, Sky Dancer, another warrior with the Expedition Champion. I think I like the second Minotaur. And then we're pretty likely to wield something useful out of the spec, whether it's Stinger, Priest, Sky Dancer, or Champion. And then definitely want to prioritize more cheap creatures here to help us play the Minotaur as early as possible. And... Hmm. This isn't really a Mind Carver deck. So I'm looking at a third Electromancer, probably. Don't think Rubble Fort is needed when our Minotaurs already have haste. And then we'll maybe wheel Colossus and we'll take that. Could also make a case for Blood Price as a bit of card draw. But that's also a card we should be able to pick up pretty easily. Yeah, we're just going to hope for an opening hand where we go turn 1 Sneaking Guide, turn 2 Ambusher, turn 3 Triple Electromancer into a Shadow Skull Minotaur. Easy peasy. And yeah, I'll take another Ambusher. I would love this Zoff Consumption as well. But it's just so important that we have two mana creatures with relevant creature types in this deck and ambush are still nice in the late game but yeah consumption is great too this is also a deck that might play fewer lands so it's going to be more difficult to cast the consumption at six anyway could also be a deck where silencer is playable maybe as a one-off Ooh, that's a gift black bloom rogue now this one i'll definitely take a relevant creature type, a nice dual face card, and even if we're not milling the opponent, a 2-3 menace is still decent. So our deck is shaping up nicely. Could use a few more cheap removal spells, maybe. Well, Vanquish the Weak will do. I do think Rage would also be fine here. But 
I think I still prefer Vanquish. What we really need is like a couple bug catchers at two mana, which can hit pretty hard. Not really a Relic Vile deck. Kite Silk could also be playable here, but I'll still take the Vanquish. And all right, Blood Priests, easy pick here. We don't have any clerics yet. It's a two drop, it's perfect. Definitely like it a lot more than the Fisher Wizard. And we've got triple wizard already here with the Electromancer. And perfect, we wield the mace, all according to plan. And probably take another sneaking guide, don't know if I'll play two, but barrage is just not a very good card. This is a four mana warrior, do I need that over Hellion? I guess I don't have many four drops yet, so maybe. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't mind a second Hellion, but again, our curve is going to be pretty low in this deck. So I could see myself playing the Warrior instead. Almost have a playable deck here after two packs. So our deck hopefully can only improve. Yeah, the Shatter Skull Minotaurs are kind of like four drops in this deck, so... All right. A lot of options here. I think I like the Night Runner here for a couple of reasons. First off, we are already have the Relic Robber that we want to make unblockable, so that play makes playing Sneaking Guides much more appealing. And Sneaking Guide is pretty good with the Night Runner. And then we can also potentially play it with the mana that the Electromancer generates. Alternatively, we could take like a Blood Beckoning to get some creatures back in the late game, which I definitely would like as well, or Spike Field Hazard as cheap removal. I think I like the Night Runner. Ooh, perfect. This is an awesome card in this deck. Uh, another Blood Priest would be amazing to wheel, but definitely gotta take the Spark Mage. And now here's a card I don't mind, the Song Mat Treachery. Although, do I take it over a Blood Priest is a question. I think I still gotta take the Blood Priest just because we only have the one Cleric so far, looking at our creature types. And just having more types for party is gonna make our Electromancers and Ravager's Mace and Spark Mage is that much better. So I think it's still the Priest here, but Treachery would also be awesome in this deck. So I think it's still kind of close. And I'll maybe play a Spellcraft. Seems pretty synergistic here. And definitely take another Ambusher. Pretty late Thief there too. And yeah, I'll take a Vanguard. Another nice 2-drop. Most of our 2-drops are Warriors, but most of our 1 and 3-drops aren't Warriors, so I guess it works out. So we'll have to make some cuts. Definitely not a deck that's going to play a very high land count. As we pick up another playable here. We've got a decent amount of interaction. Sadly, didn't pick up any royal eruptions. Not sure about the scavenged blade. Probably not going to play the stinger. Or the vampire. And I think Hellion might be cuttable too, since our deck is so synergistic. And we didn't end up with a ton of dual-faced cards. Someone's gonna get double Thief very late here and be happy with it. And I don't hate playing both Sneaking Guides when we have Relic Robber and Night Runner in the deck. But uh, we'll see. So yeah, Scavenged Blades might be cut. We do have Triple Ambusher as mana sinks in a late game, so we don't necessarily need a ton of equipment. I'll maybe play Fourth Electromancer here. We just want to maximize the curve of 1-drop into 2-drop into Electromancer make 3 mana. That's what our deck is trying to do. Not sure if I'm playing the Silencer. Six mana is pretty pricey, and I'm probably not going to play a ton of lands in this deck. So it's going to be tricky to fit that in. But 
But everything else looks pretty strong. Alright, let's finalize this build. So, cutting at least one land. Do I cut a second land? I have Rogue and Rebirth as dual-faced cards. Rebirth is probably going to be a land about half the time. Rogue, probably going to be a land like 30% of the time. We do have some mana sinks with Ambusher. We've got a Mace we can move around. So we've got a couple mana sinks, the Sneaking Guides as well. So I think 16 basics is going to be okay, which means I need to make three cuts. So those are going to be pretty tough. Death Touch is a nice ability, but we don't have any flash rogues that we can like play in some speed to leverage Skulker. And we're kind of a deck that wants to be attacking. Although Death Touch can be quite nice if we're facing a green deck where their creatures are going to be very large. And my removal isn't the best at dealing with green creatures. We've got double Vanquish the Weak, which doesn't kill a Baloth, for instance. So I, I do see the merits of playing Skulker. I can maybe shave one Electromancer. And the fact that we have Electromancer also makes me less likely to cut a red creature, because we can use the red mana to play those red creatures afterwards. So maybe Skulker's actually the cut. And then I can maybe shave one Electromancer. Still have four Wizards. Six Warriors, six Rogues, two Clerics. And then one final cut. Shave a land. Play 15 lands plus the two dual face cards. It's maybe a little greedy, but I'm okay if I have to play Rogue or Rebirth as a land. Or maybe shave one Sneaking Guide. It's just that having the one drop makes my Electromancer so much better than if I don't have it. If we didn't have triple Electromancer, I would be much less tempted to play the Sneaking Guide. And then I should probably cut a Swamp. And then we've got seven Swamps, Rogue and Rebirth. So kind of like we have eight Black Sources, eight Red Sources. But we've got eight untapped Red Sources for the turn one Sneaking Guide. Yeah, just gotta get lucky on our opening hands. Like, the opening hands in this deck are gonna basically determine how well our deck does. If we have a great curve out start, it's gonna be very difficult for the opponent to catch up. If we kind of stumble, don't find our two colors in time, then it's gonna be a bit more difficult. So this is the type of deck that would have loved some sort of dual lands that comes into play untapped, but there's no red-black pathway. Alright, how do we call this one? Alright, we're on the play. Yeah, the sand's okay. Would love to draw a land into a 3-drop. But can't really mulligan. All right, I did find a three drop. Don't have a third land yet. For now, I'll just play Vanguard. The Wind Robber is going to be annoying, but I don't want to rebuke it just yet. Blue green. Don't often see the Wind Robber in blue green. I right, didn't want to draw that Minotaur anyway. And then I get to attack, play Priest, play Rebirth tapped. And yeah, if we draw Mountain, we get to smash with Minotaur, which would be awesome. Otherwise, Rogue sets up a 3-mana Minotaur, but I still need double red. Alright, mill the Swamp. But didn't draw Mountain. So I've got a few options now. I think I like playing the Rogue and just attacking. Can attack first, could also play Ravager's Mace, and then just attack with the equipped creature. Um, although then if they have a bounce spell for my equipped creature, 
I fall pretty far behind and I'm also further on the creature types for Minotaur. I don't think I want to rebuke Geyser Mage now. So yeah, between Mace and Rogue, I think I just offer the trade here. I'm trading a 2-drop for a 3-drop, so I mean, that's fine by me. And play another creature. And the only thing that playing Rogue does as a land there is get me closer to the Spellcraft. Alright, found another Swamp. Not the preferred draw. So now I think I like Mace on the Priest, smash with both. Opponents at 8. And yeah, if we draw any land we can Spellcraft, if we draw Mountain we get to Minotaur. And Rebuke is another cheap spell we can play alongside another 2-drop perhaps. Opponent stays back with everyone. So, I've got options. So there is an argument for this turn just using the Spellcraft and not attacking. So next turn if I draw another Mountain, I can play Rebuke and play Minotaur, because I wouldn't have traded any creatures. Or I can play Minotaur, 5-4. What happens if I play Minotaur and attack with everyone? They could make some decent blocks, but... Yeah, you know what, maybe just Minotaur smash with alls to play. If my opponent double blocks Scythe Cat and Wind Robber, they can block my other two creatures. They take 7 down to 1 and they're dead to the Spellcraft. If they double block Stalker and Wind Robber on the Rogue, then I still kill the Wind Robber and they don't have any good block with the Scythe Cat. If they double block Priest, they don't have a good single block on the Minotaur, so... I think this is fine. And then I can just hope to burn them out with the Spellcraft. Alright, that also works. They're chumping and trading. But now they're still at 3, facing 2 potentially lethal creatures. Kick the Geyser Mage. Bounces Minotaur, which puts them dead to any removal spell here. So don't even have to play the Spellcraft. In fact, my opponent is just dead on board. Yeah, they definitely should have... I mean, I guess if they bounce the Priest, I get to drain them again. So my opponent was kind of between a rock and a hard place there. So, we're on the draw, and this hand looks quite nice. Probably playing the Rebirth tapped, because I want to be able to curve out, and I think I'd rather have Rogue now as a creature. And then turn to probably... Expert actually, so I can go turn 3 Electromancer into Ambusher. It's a much better curve. So showing the importance of having a red 2 drops to follow up Electromancer. Could also rebuke with the 2 mana. Opponent on a blue black party deck maybe. Yeah, I think I like playing the creature here and then next turn we can rebuke. Diviner. This is a cleric. Ooh, Spark Mage. Alright, now I'm incentivized to play Rogue as a land so I can Spark Mage next turn and then either feed this for more Rebuke. I'm guessing Blue Black is not gonna have any giant creatures I need to save the Feed the Swarm for. So I could just kill Diviner paying for life and keep Rebuke for later. Although I guess I'll be kinda limited in how much red mana I have. I only have the one mountain so I could maybe see using the Rebuke now being better. Sure. Uh, 
And then... No attacks. Because I don't want my opponent not playing a creature and then the Spark Mage not having a good target. And we want to keep as many creatures from our party alive as possible. Opponent passes with 4 mana, so this could be into the Royal Kicked. That's kind of the most likely card, which we don't care about with the Spark Mage. So I think that's still a fine play. Could also go Vanguard plus Feed the Swarm. Ooh, Anticognition, that hurts. Yeah, that one I could have played around by playing Vanguard and Feed the Swarm, but it's not a card you see very often. Alright, now do I want to attack? Not really. I'll wait to play Vanguard and then we can maybe get past the Priest. Keeps up for mana again. I can see if the Vanguard resolves. It does. I'm tempted to just feed the Swarm the Blight Priest here and attack. And we still have a Spellcraft for another creature they play. They could have a Sky Dancer, the 2-1 with Flash, but it doesn't ambush any of my creatures. So I'm fine attacking into it and trading Electromancer. Not enough mana for the Living Tempests. Alright, they also had the Intutorial kick, so they just had both last turn. But Bouncing Electromancer is not too bad, since we can just use the mana again and cast the Spellcraft. So I still have Warrior Rogue Wizard, so this would make 3 mana. So I'm hoping they just tap out for a creature that I can Spellcraft here. Or I can just pump the Ambusher with the mana we generate. Main phase, Thought Thief into Relic Axe. Alright, that's fine. Hoo-hoo. Hello there. Some Burning Tree Emissary action here. A chef's Kiss. That was a beautiful turn. Glacial Grasp. We would have drawn some nice ones too here. But I can still pump my Ambusher twice. Yeah, that was a nice game. Alright, so we're on the draw here with a fine opening hand. A couple of warriors to go with the Vanguard. Probably holding on to the Black Bloom Rogue for the time being. Opponent on blue-white with a turn to Pack Beast. Between Vanguard and Ambusher, I guess Ambusher lines up a little bit better here. And now here he's binding the Ambusher, which, you know, is a reasonable answer, but it does keep my warrior in play for synergies like Vanguard and Party. So it just goes to show that the Binding's kind of an awkward removal spell in this set. And in fact, I could go Electromancer into Vanguard this turn, which is just a little bit too efficient to pass up. Alternatively, I could play Night Runner, and then next turn I'll have Warrior, Rogue, and Wizard. And I can play Vanguard afterwards. Or I can play the Blind Bloom Rogue now, and then next turn go Electromancer into Runner. But Runner is a bit more threatening if I play it early. So I think I think I might just play the Runner now. And then wait a turn on uh, Electromancer and we'll see. I mean, I can still go Electromancer into Rogue if I want to. Thaladar. Okay. Ooh, Vanquish. Perfect. So I get to go Electromancer... 
make three red mana and then vanquish the Felidar, attack with the Night Runner. And I have to do that pre-combat, so I won't be able to use the runner's ability really. But that's okay. Just hit for two. And we hit a land anyway, so we got rid of that. Yeah, we could have vanquished and then just attacked and not play the Electromancer, but I kind of like getting the 3-2 out there. And then we can empty our hands next turn, just waiting to top deck something powerful like maybe a Minotaur or a Mace. We'll take two. Opponent passes with five mana. A Relic Robber could be an amazing draw. Although my opponent is representing a Living Tempest, which could ambush either Runner or Robber. I think I should try and play something pre-combat just to see if they have a Counterspell or some other interaction instead. And then if they do counter, I don't want to be tapped out because then I can't use a Runner's ability. And then I'll probably just attack with the Electromancer. Since I'm fine trading that for the Living Tempest, so we'll play Vanguard. Resolves, and then I'll just attack with Electromancer and respect the Living Tempests. And then play Rogue. Relic Robber has haste anyway, so can play that next turn. And my opponent's probably going to play the Living Tempest if they have it. There it is. So now if we draw a removal spell or a third warrior, the vanguard can prevent it from blocking and we can have a great attack. Attacks with the Tempest. Maybe signifying that they have another one. Or they're gonna play a blocker second main. Because the vanguard can prevent pack beasts from blocking, so they currently don't have any blockers. Domination stealing my rogue. Sneaking Guide's actually an awesome draw here. So, I mean, I still have a good attack here. So I don't think I want to attack with a Relic Robber this turn. We'll first see what we hit with the Night Runner, assuming they don't chum block it. And they might just trade for Electromancer or the Vanguard here. And then we can hopefully close out the game with Guide plus Robber. And we might hit something nice with a Runner here too. Alright, definitely take it. Point was holding a Field Research, which they were going to kick next turn, so that feels like a pretty big victory. So our opponent's empty-handed, top decking. Next turn I can play Relic Robber, make it unblockable with Guide. And it doesn't take many of those attacks to win a game. That's also an awesome draw. But I think I stick to the plan here. And then I don't mind sending in the Electromancer. Although I don't have to, I've got Spellcraft. Don't really have a reason to trade. Rebirth is perfect. Yeah, I'm just gonna keep doing this until they die. It's not gonna take very long. And now they're also dead to the Spellcraft. Awesome. Alright, we've got a decent hand, especially if we can find land 3 within the next couple draw steps. Probably start with... Hmm, it's actually tricky, because on the one hand we want to save Priest until we have more creature types in play, on the other hand, we want to play Vanguard with the mana we generate from Electromancer. Although we could also play Rebuke. 
So I think it's still correct to play Vanguard first, but maybe next turn we draw something that makes us change our play. Experts. That is pretty annoying since all my cards are good. So against blue-black. I'm tempted to get rid of Feed the Swarm and keep all my creatures a Mace, because Mace is such a good grindy card in a more uh, grindy matchup if my opponent's going to kill a lot of my stuff. Otherwise, I could be convinced to get rid of Mace, because it's kind of a slow card. But against blue-black specifically, we might have to be prepared to play a longer game. So let's get rid of Feed the Swarm. And just keep as many creatures as possible with Mace, so we don't r risk running out of creatures to equip. Opponents on the mill game plan. Ruin Crab, Mills, Minotaur. Alright, land is great. So I get to play land, play Electromancer, and then probably just rebuke the crab before it does too much more damage. Uh-oh. Anticognition. Man, what's up with all these anticognitions today? Double Vanquish milled. Alright. So, probably want to double spell and kill the crab. And then... Priest versus Ambusher is a question. Probably still Ambusher. They could anti condition again. They didn't. Sky Dancer. Gonna trade for Vanguard. And goodbye, Crab. So, at least we ended up with a mace still, which I think is going to be good here. This could have been a Feed the Swarm. Although now, I wish it was a Feed the Swarm instead, as they played Infiltrator, which is great with the Expert here. So yeah, this is going to be a tough game. They did mill most of my removal with Double Vanquish gone. So, yeah. Can play Blood Priest, equip Mace. But my opponent's going to get to draw two cards per turn now. I would be happy with the double block. My right, opponent does go for the trade. So, I mean, the Ambusher could have hit for quite a bit of damage, but... And within all those extra draws, my opponent probably would have found some answers, is my guess. Got 20 cards remaining, and everything except basic lands are fine draws, I think. Especially a Minotaur. Opponent has a pause, so it could be a Living Tempest. In which case I don't want to attack with Priest and I'll just send Minotaur. But if they have a Chilling Grasp, Glacial Grasp, I'm fine to attack. I guess they could have the Thought Thief still. So it was a little bit risky to attack, but gotta take a few risks here. Kicked Royal Mage, getting back. 
Grasp to lock down my Minotaur again. Although we're currently not getting milled. And Sneaking Guide's not a bad draw. So equip Mace, and they would have to trade both creatures. Seems fine. So in the end, the mace is doing some good work for us. So I'm happy that I kept it. Opponent's gonna... I'll lock down my Minotaur again. And yeah, the Minotaur costs 6 life if they wanted to kill it with Feed the Swarm. Oof, wow. What a draw. I'm interested to see which one they tap down now. Only 4 mana, so don't need to be afraid of a Living Tempest. Locks down a Robber. We are down to 13 cards. Those Grasps also mill for 2. <laughs> Another Rune Crab. Well, let's see if they were sandbagging lands. Doesn't appear to be the case. Smash for seven. Another grasp. Into the Royal Kicks. Fair enough. Yeah, my opponent could get there here if they've got some more interaction. Double Rune Crab is definitely a very scary deck to face. And then they seem to have built their deck around Rune Crab with a lot of removal and not a ton of rogue synergies necessarily. Plunder to refuel. So I get one chance to get a good hit in here. Down to nine cards we go. <laughs> wow, triple crab. Opponent's deck is insane. So I think the play might be... Mace on the robber plus ambusher. Is it better than... I guess I can go Ambusher into Minotaur. They get the free block on the robber. And they can take five. If I go Ambusher equip, this would be four powered. So yeah, I think I might as well... Hmm. If they mill me for six, can I kill them next turn? It's gonna be hard. Yeah, I think I go Ambusher Minotaur. Just because then a counterspell like Anticognition doesn't get us anymore. Alright. Opponent falls to three. Let's see if we're dead. Opponent looking at their graveyard, so they probably have the 4 mana sorcery here to bring a creature back, play another crab, and probably mill me for 9. Nope, they played land, so that can be it. Maybe a kicked royal mage and grasp to mill me for another 2. Although I think they're 1 mana short of doing that. So we should be able to figure out what the last 2 cards are here. Well, we're not dead yet, so that's going to be a good sign. If we still have a Blood Priest in the deck, that could win us the game on the spot. And yeah, I think we've only seen one Blood Priest so far. So if we can draw our second copy here, that could win the game. Opponent with Royal Mage getting into the Royal. Huh. That could make things more complicated. There's a Blood Priest. So... I think I gotta play Blood Priest. My opponent bounces a creature in response. Um, but both of Minotaur and Robber I can replay. They could trade Royal Mage for Robber, but then I don't have a Rogue anymore, so Priest isn't lethal. If I equip Ambusher, then they just bounce Ambusher. But then I would still have Rogue, Warrior, and Priest, so maybe that's the way to bait them here. Yeah, 
I guess I like that idea. Let's see if they fall for it. Move to combats. And then I don't want to attack with a robber. I just send Minotaur an ambusher. And if they lose the crab, then they can't mill me anymore. And I would still get a turn. Because if I attack with all, what happens? They could trade for robber. Double block. Hmm. I guess they would be forced to bounce a warrior still. But then the robber's gone and this isn't lethal anymore. So I think the robber has to stay back, weirdly enough. And then hope they just bounce a creature here. Alright. Oof. Close one. Wow, this game couldn't have been any closer. Yeah, it took a second to figure out the optimal play given that we had Priest in hand. My opponent may have been able to kind of piece things together because they weren't actually forced to pull the trigger on the, into the Royal there. But it did make sense for them to still use it. So, oof. Very close one there. Alright, on the draw. Fine hand. Couple two drops that scale into the late game and two removal spells. <laughs> triple ambusher to follow up our triple crab game. Ooh, that's a nice one, especially when we have two removal spells to clear a path for it. Opponent Mono White so far, Celebrants. Ooh, man, we've got so many options here. I think I still play the Relic Runner or the Night Runner. So if I play Night Runner, next turn Electromancer makes three mana, which lets me play another Ambusher afterwards. Or I might just end up killing the Celebrant and maybe try and hit a land drop with the Night Runner. But I can attack first and maybe my opponent respects a pump spell I don't have. A second Celebrant. Alright, that's annoying. So. Got options. I think I might just kill a Celebrant right now. Because I gotta start using my black mana since we've got three black cards in hand and only the one swamp at the moment. Get in one damage. Opponent finds their second color. And a Cleric of Life Spawns. Really hope they don't have a second Cleric here. Alright. Well. The funny thing is we could have an awesome turn with Electromancer into Electromancer into Ambusher. Or Pump Ambusher. But I think I just gotta kill the Cleric here before it's too late. We'll have to wait a turn on the Awesomeness. Uh oh. Dauntless Unity foils my plan, but I, I guess it's still a one-for-one one trade. Yeah, this is very bad. Opponent with a nice synergistic Cleric deck, and things are not looking great for me. So I can go Electromancer into Electromancer into Expert plus... Ambusher, so <laughs> I do get to empty my hand here. Wow, my opponent's hand is stacked. I'm assuming I have to take the Apparition.
Yeah, I'll take the apparition. Well, this would have been an insane turn, but we're still facing some pretty annoying creatures on the other side. So now my game plan is to kind of leverage the ambushers, but I can only pump them once, which doesn't get past the cleric, so really just need to draw removal for this again, since the first time didn't go so well. Yeah, I wish we had a couple bug catchers in the deck instead of ambushers. One ambusher down, opponents kind of piece together that that is our game plan. Ravager's Mace is an awesome draw. So it gives plus 3 plus 0 oh, and menace. So I can turn any of my creatures into a 6 powered attacker. Probably gonna equip Electromancer here. And then I can maybe trade for the Cleric of Life's Bonds, or my opponent takes 6. Journey probably gets rid of my mace. So we're answering each other back and forth. I'll take a removal spell for Cleric here, find a Blood Priest instead. Are we in the territory of all-out attacks yet? Don't think so. Just Blood Priest and Ambusher and then gotta find either removal for the Cleric or more lands to pump Ambusher. Although I don't really want to draw lands. Gloom Hunter just for two mana. But it is enough to grow the Cleric which now doesn't die to my five mana removal spell anymore. And next turn is going to grow up to a 6-6. Six, six. Yeah, it's rough. Don't have any good attacks. What if I send everyone... This gets to eat my Expert, this eats... Electromancer or Night Runner. this blocks another one. I get in for like 4 or 5 damage. Yeah, that's pretty bad. Oh, Zagras would have been insane here, yeah. Give everything Death Touch and Smash. I still have my own Feed the Swarm to kill Cleric. That would be one of my better draws. Because it's really just a Cleric that's holding us back here. Everything else could attack, technically. Mother Blood Priests. It's not bad. Drains them for 4, puts them to 10, 3 blockers, block, 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 take 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, put them to 3. Is that worth an all-out attack? So if I lose 3 creatures here, I would lose probably Electromancer or Nightrunner, they block another one, eat experts. I gotta play the Blood Priest before attacking. Yeah, I think I go for it. I didn't want to send the Expert because they might eat a Night Runner, in which case I would lose all my rogues, which could be relevant. Looks like my opponent's gonna try and trade for my two ambushers, which makes sense from their perspective. And then take six down to four. I get to kill the Blight Priest at least, so it's not too bad. Opponent falls to four, they still have three blockers. Gotta hope they don't draw anything too powerful. They're looking at their graveyard. Ooh, wow. That's insane. Thwart a grave. Yeah. I think we're dead now. Opponent's back to 10. Double Core Celebrant in play. They've already answered all my cards, basically. Feed the Swarm. Oh man, this would have been awesome a turn ago. 
Still leaves them with double celebrant Blight Priests. Or I can kill the Journey to get my mace back. Killing the Cleric still doesn't let me get a, any good attacks in, since I can double block with the Core Celebrants. So yeah, we'll equip Mace on, I guess, a Blood Priest. Hit for five. And then basically just trade for anything. All right, one Celebrant down. And we'll and repeat this process a few times. Yeah, just killing the cleric didn't seem to do much here. But now every single one of our creatures could turn into a threat. But of course my opponent gets to play stuff as well, so I think we're still pretty far behind. Subtle Strike kills my last cleric, don't have any left in the deck. 2-2 Two -two Gloomhunter. Yeah, opponent's deck looks very strong. They also have the uh, Zof Consumption here in the mana base. Spellcraft is a couple turns late. I guess I gotta kill the Gloom Hunter here before it does more damage. And next turn we can try and equip again. At some point my opponent can turn Cleric sideways, which is gonna force a chum block. Oof, Makindi Stampede. Yeah, that's a good one. Is there anything I can top deck? Let's say I top deck the Minotaur here. I guess we'll jump here. Yeah, so take three down to four. Hope to top deck Minotaur. I think that's just my only out at this point. Come on, Minotaur. I've got two in the deck. Ah, so close. Yeah, I think uh, that was my last out. I gotta keep all creatures back. Gotta chump cleric and then... I get to block celebrant, I guess. Alright. GG's. Well, it's actually surprising that we still had an out there. So, despite... All the odds being against us, we almost managed to top deck our way out of it, so never give up hope. Alright, so we're on the play with a reasonable hand, so we're definitely relying a lot on the Night Runner to get things done for us, but we do have two removal spells to back it up. I think I gotta play Rogue turn 1 since we have so many 2 drops we would like to play on turn 2 if we draw them. All right. So I can maybe turn four go Electromancer into Rebuke. Opponent on maybe the red-white equipment deck. Hopefully no removal. Hmm. Charger could be annoying, especially when equipped with a Relic Axe. But I'm happy they're attacking. So, can go Electromancer, kill Blademaster. And maybe hit a land with the Night Runner. Sad we lost our Minotaur there. Royal Eruption Electromancer. Interesting. Alright, I'm gonna recover. So let's start by attacking with Night Runner. Play lands, and 
I mean, I could vanquish the charger, but then we also lose a creature as a problem. Opponent seems to be happy racing at the moment, which, you know, we do have a Ravager's Mace. So I think I just play Vanguard and pass. And then if they stay back, we can maybe slip past the Charger with a Ravager's Mace. Sig 4. Electromancer is nice. And it's 3 mana, so it's essentially free. And then I can Spellcraft Outrider. Hit for 5. I guess I don't make use of the runner's ability in that scenario. What's the alternative? Play Electromancer Vanquish. And then I can maybe hit a land. Hitting a land is relevant, sort of. It would be more relevant if I played Spellcraft and then needed to double 3-drop next turn, but if I play Vanquish anyway, it doesn't matter too much. And then next turn if I draw land I could still maybe vanquish plus mace. Ooh, second relic axe. So vanquish no longer works. But if they attack they could be dead to the ravager's mace. Oof, they had another royal eruption too. So I need a minotaur basically. So I gotta equip Mace and just attack with the Runner, hope to hit something good and jump with the Vanguard, which doesn't kill the Charger. Yeah, I guess they would have been able to kill me had they just killed their own Charger with the Royal Eruption. Hit for four, hope to hit something good. And uh, yeah, I'm in chum block mode, but I can potentially top deck my way out of it. I can kill a creature end of turn. Yeah, that's too bad. Opponent had some nice removal here too. Double Royal Eruption Rebuke. And sadly Vanquish doesn't quite do it here. GG's. Yeah, we could have tried to trade earlier with the Charger, but it just feels so bad when you lose another creature in the process too, and it's not like we had an abundance of creatures in hand. So 5 and 3, but had some very close games in there that could have gone either way. Crack some packs. Skyclave Shade, definitely a powerful card in Limited 2. There's a War Leader. Awesome in the warrior deck. Yeah, we never got a nod draw of turn 1 rogue, turn 2 warrior, turn 3 electromancer into minotaur. But uh, the deck was definitely capable of some awesome starts. Ashaya's awesome here. Definitely the pick, even over royal eruption, which is probably the best common in my opinion. And Tazri, Beacon of Unity. Haven't seen this much in play. And a Nissa. Also a card that hasn't seen much standard play yet. Maybe once Omnath goes away. Adventure, pretty awesome limited card too. Also surprised I haven't seen it more in play. And a cleric. I've yet to draft a multicolor green deck, so maybe one day. But for now, wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day.
I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.